This is the same or largely the same presentation I gave to the select board probably a month or so ago. Uh, tweaked a little bit to put more emphasis on some of the build out and some of the planning aspects of it. So, uh, well, sorry, introductions first. As, as mentioned, I'm Tim Batting with Wright Pierce. So here's what we're going to talk about tonight. We did some introductions. I'm going to give a brief history of the wastewater treatment facility and some of the upgrades that have occurred there over the years. Uh, we'll talk about the facility planning process and what some of the findings of the facility plan were, some of the recommendations contained therein, and then get into some of the proposed phasing and costs contained in the facility plan. So before we embark on this journey, uh, wastewater engineering, like many fields, is one laden with acronyms. So we made this slide to touch upon some of the key ones we're going to hear tonight. Uh, WWTF stands for Wastewater Treatment Facility. Flow, when we talk about flow, that's the gallons of sewage coming to the wastewater plant. We usually refer to that in millions of gallons per day, or MGD. Uh, when we talk about load or pollutants, that's the that's the stuff that's in the flow coming to the plant, like the the, uh, the pollutants, and that is usually measured in well, a lot of forms, but the two ones we predominantly refer to are BOD, that stands for biochemical oxygen demand, that's what's dissolved or soluble in the sewage, and then there's the TSS, or total suspended solids, those are solids that are suspended in, in the waste stream coming to the plant, so we treat these different ways. So a little overview on the uh, treatment facility. Here's an aerial of the plant. Uh, it's been roughly color-coded based on vintage of, of the equipment and tankage on site. The interesting fact about Hampton is uh, it's one of the, it may be the oldest continuously operated plant in the state. I think you're tied with Durham. But you were one of the first tre treatment plants on the eastern seaboard in, in, a, in a coastal community. Uh, interesting reason is prior to the upgrade in the 30s, there was a, a sewer outfall pipe that ran out at the end of Church Street just out into the ocean, and then that, that uh, had, had is issues with the beach, so then they decided to build a treatment plant at that time. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> so, <laughs> only with incoming time. Right? Yes, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, upgraded in 64. Uh, the big upgrade when it was turned into what's called a secondary treatment plant where we biologically treat the waste was in 1970, well, with, with, with the tanks that are there now, is in 1974. Uh, there's been other miscellaneous upgrades in 2002, 2004. De dewatering was done in 2012. Uh, but most, all the tanks except one of the three secondary clarifiers was in the 74 upgrade. And uh, in 2002, some of the internals of the aeration tanks, I don't know if I can uh, make this cursor appear here. Oh, I gotta go back. The, and actually, while we're here, because I'm not, I don't know how many of you have been to the plant or not, I'll give you a quick walkthrough. So, flow comes into these primary clarifiers after the primary, that's where we settle solids out by gravity. After that, it flows to these aeration tanks where it's bio, biologically treated by bacteria that we grow in there for specifically that purpose. From there, it flows to these secondary clarifiers. So those where those bacteria that we grew settled to the bottom and are pumped out and pumped back into here. Some are wasted and turned into sludge and gets hauled off, but the rest get reused in here we pump in a circle there. So after it's treated bi biologically, we settle out the bacteria in here and actually clear water leaves these tanks and it flows to the chlorine contact tanks where it's disinfected with sodium hypochlorite, which is basically household bleach, but stronger in concentration. And after the uh, chlorine contact tanks, it flows by gravity out to an unnamed tributary of Tidemill Creek, where it then makes its way out to the ocean. Uh, so the big takeaway here is there's been no big, no comprehensive plant-wide upgrade since the 74 upgrade, so 43 years. And there is equipment that is there to this date that has been there since then. So it's got a pretty considerable number of hours on it. So what is a facility plan? And the town, a facility plan is an evaluation of the equipment and facilities at the, at the facility. Uh, it's a review of the existing flows and loads that are coming to the plant now. It's developing future projected flows and loads for the, for the kind of growth that's anticipated within Hampton. And lastly, it's looking at a schedule and estimated costs for improvements and upgrades that will need to occur to either maintain the ongoing growth or sustain, or, or sustain future growth as well. So the town commissioned us to engage in the facility plan, knowing we were bumping into some capacity challenges at the plant. I think it's important to note here that 
this study has been done in previous years. It's usually required to be done every six, seven years. Um, and that's important for when we get into some of the recommendations that, you know, th there was some warning. It was coming. It was coming. <laughs> now it's here. Um, so I just interrupt with that. No, it's good, and I'm glad you uh, mentioned that. So in brief, and the facility plan, Jen and I both have our copies here. It's a fairly hefty document, but uh, basically there, there's two types of, of needs at the plant. There, there's needs associated with the aging infrastructure and the equipment that's reached the end of its useful life, and there's also addressing the capacity concerns of the fact that the town of Hampton has grown and continues to grow, and that growth impacts our ability to treat that waste at the plant based on the capacity of the plant to treat sewage. So actually another thing I want to mention here, when we talk about the capacity of the plant, where we talked earlier about flows and loads, from a flow standpoint you're doing okay from a gallons of sewage coming in. From a load standpoint that's where we're bumping into the threshold we don't want to be at because the, the, the sewage coming in due to the nature of some ministries as well is fairly strong so that's why you have, an, you have okay capacity from a flow standpoint, but from the load standpoint, you don't. One of the words that we've been using to help try to explain this is when you think capacity and how much something can hold, and that's where Tim is saying the flow is okay. But if you change the word capacity to capability and think of the loads, our processes can only capably treat so much. That's where our head is starting to really bang and hit. So we have to look at the capability and what our equipment and our processes can currently do to handle these loads. So sometimes to remove that confusion on capacity so people aren't thinking, what do you mean the plant can't hold any more water? That's not what we're saying. It's not a, the sewage coming in. It's the capability to treat the contents of that um, stuff that's coming into the plant. So yep. am I hearing that the load is non-residential? It is. It's both. It's everything. Yeah, so there's certainly a... a commercial industrial fraction, there's the beach fraction which is grown, and then there's just the regular residential fraction as well. Continue. So, uh, And we have no problem. I think sometimes it goes well yeah. to do some dialogue back and forth. Okay, um, anybody, yeah. Oh yeah, no, And I'm point. also jumping in yeah. a little bit because as, we, as we've given this presentation, we've heard some questions where people have said, eh, you know, I didn't understand that. So sometimes it's easier to explain a little bit as we're going through it. Fair enough, so. anybody? No, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad you said that. I meant to say that in, in the opening, that you know we're here to answer questions, so it, let's have it be an open forum. So just jump in whenever you have a question, and we'll do our best to get it answered then. Can we start over? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, let me take it from the top. <laughs> so the facility plan looked at the needs at the treatment plant and triaged them into phases based on priority of need, based on how, 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 how important they were to, and the timeline for them to occur. So basically the phase one upgrade is one that's addressing some immediate con uh, safety needs at the plant, the capacity concerns, and replace some of the highest priority equipment at the plant. Uh, phase two is where we shifted some, some uh, other some equipment we can get a few more years out of too. And uh, addressing, it, there's some work in the maintenance buildings that needs to occur, and then replacing other high and medium priority equipment. Like for instance, the primary clarifiers, two of the big circles that we saw, and the gravity thickeners, the s smaller two circles on the right side of that aerial, uh, both those mechanisms are very old, and they all need to be replaced. But for the purposes of phasing it and trying to lessen the impact of the town, we just said, well, let's do one primary clarifier in phase one and one gravity thickener in phase one, and phase two we'll do the other of the two to kind of spread out. They really are all of the same vintage, but if we had one new one, we'd be a little more confident in its ongoing ability to, to work to work for the town. So, so those need to be done no matter what. I mean, whether they have that zero yeah. growth in the future or not. That, yes, it, they're 1974 vintage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they, they you know, unlike your car, you, know, when you only run it part of the time during the day. Everything at the plant, you know, those clarifiers run 24 hours a day. They're turning and doing their thing. So. If you think about it, so all the influence from town all comes into what they call the headworks building. It's the first place Everywhere you flush, everything that hits our sewers comes into the treatment plant. Those huge pumps have to take it and push it through the next process. Those pumps have been going nonstop since 1974. 
And this is why, as part of the uh, kind of <coughs> public outreach campaign we're doing for the project, and Jen's going to speak to more in a bit, we want to do some tours of the plant for interested residents to come through and see some of the stuff, because that, that does more justice than the, the, the photos, which are kind of tough to see here. The photo on the top right, just to talk about stuff that is really being addressed in phase one, uh, the life safety needs. That is the electrical, for lack of a better room, the electrical room. All the electrical components that run the majority of the plant. That's also where our uh, operator and uh, operations coordinator's offices are. So it's a code issue, obviously, that we have office space commingled with an electrical gear space. <laughs> so that's something we want to get addressed. <clears throat> Uh, so phase three is the lower priority equipment, things like dewatering, things like things that you've done more recently. So that's where kind of that stuff you can get some more life out of. So a little more in depth on phase one, and there's more detail in the facility plan and some follow up chart, uh, tables we've made. But it upgrades multiple systems. That phase is estimated at planning level cost at 13.8 million. And this is just a proposed schedule for when we'd recommend the improvements take place. And uh, Jen, I don't know if you want to speak to the plan with the Warren article timing. Right. So the 13, it's thirteen million eight hundred and eighty thousand. That is the dollar value that has been set forth in the proposed Warren article that has been recommended by the selectmen. And last night, um, a recommendation was made by the budget committee. That. $13.8 million comprises of 12 separate projects that through the facility study have been categorized as those most needed. Not every single one of those projects is something that can just be, I need to replace that pump. You know, so you think about the pumps are expensive themselves, but I can't just go find a manufacturer, bid it, is it the right pump, the right type, replace it. There are projects in there, such as the aeration basin that we we're talking about, which Tim will go into in a little bit, that require a design, an engineered design. I mean, Tim ran through the process part like it was something that we just do like a conveyor belt. But every single part of the process involves a calculation and the timing and uh, the engineering part of it. So there's going to be the design, the engineering. Anything you do when you're dealing with your wastewater treatment plant requires permits. It's a permitting component. And then it needs to go out to bid to meet purchasing policy. We want to get the best price for the town. And then out to construction. The 13.8 includes all those phases. So it is from design to construction. So there's been some questions, you know, well, what are the details? How are we going to do it? What are we going to do? Well, we're going to use best engineering practices for our plant based on the processes we have and the processes that have been studied, and those designs will be developed from there. Um, that's why money is needed as a whole. You need money to do the design. You need money to permit it and then take it to construction, and that will be a whole process over the multiple years. <coughs> so You also need to operate while you're constructing. 100% operational during the entire time all this goes on. Yep, that's exactly right. You still have to meet your effluent discharge permit even when you're taking tanks offline to, to upgrade the plant. So here's a little bit about uh, the overviews, what's in phase one. Headworks, aeration, clarifier, thickener, one of each, uh, plant water septage, some sludge pump improvements, polymer improvements, some improvements in the operations building and maintenance garage, and uh, SCADA. What SCADA is, it stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. It's basically the... Uh, the computer system that runs the plant, and more on that in a minute. So the headworks upgrade, uh, we're placing the ventilation in there, the lighting in there, some electrical components. There's some pretty badly corroded concrete walkways that we want to get addressed, and some FRP grading that needs to get addressed as well. And basically, there's some other worn out and failing equipment in that space. It's a very corrosive environment in the headworks, as you'll see if anyone comes on the tour, because that's where all the raw sewage comes in. And uh, without proper or, or operating ventilation, it's very humid and odorous, and there's high hydrogen sulfide levels. <laughs> As it is now, for anybody who wants yeah. to come on the tour, um, if you are highly asthmatic, we will not recommend that you enter uh, the Headworks building. Uh, we go in fully uh, with meters 
and uh, protected to go into this building. I mean, if you think about it, this is where all the effluent of Hampton enters the treatment process. So a ration tank upgrade, and this is the one that keys in the most with some of the planning uh, and growth challenges that, that we'll face here in Hampton. So the aeration tank upgrade is to increase the capacity of the plant to treat BOD, to treat the load that comes in, also to replace worn out failing equipment, and also to provide emergency power generation for the aeration system. You're one of the handful of plants in the state where if the power goes out, your plant only does settling. It doesn't do, do any biological treatement. So uh, the regulators at NHDES would very much like if the aeration system was also on standby power. So this, and right now the town has taken some steps to, so you could get a, you could hook up a portable generator, but it's not like the generator at your house. This is a diesel three phase and you got to find one and get it there, which when we need a generator, most other, com other communities do too. So it's not a great scenario, but the town has taken some steps to try to make sure that they could keep that system running in the, in the event of a prolonged power outage. Right now, um, the last windstorm that we had October-ish, I believe, like October, November, we went without power for, I think it was a day or two. Mm -hmm. So there was no aeration occurring. It really uh, wreaks havoc on the process itself. So the process is used to the same thing with little blips based on what's coming into the plant. You take out all the aeration, which is what, lack of better words, feeds the bugs, you yeah. know, to make them eat the stuff. Um, you, you're messing with everything you're working so for two days of outage, you spend a week recovering. Um, we did take steps. Uh, we brought in the uh, electrical uh, engineers and the electricians. We've hooked up uh, something that we can <coughs> hook into uh, for the generator. That's code that we could do in the prolonged, but that is not the solution for if we were ever in a higher demand, higher load season. True. So, <clears throat> a little more on the capacity. This is historic, what your influent annual BOD loads have been to the plant. So your plant running as a conventional nitrification plant with all four tanks aerated can treat about 7,600 pounds a day of BOD. You're at, you're at about 80% of that threshold right now. And we'll more on this here, I can show you. And as you can imagine, this is, this is the kind of month-by-month month breakdown. It occurs in the summer, obviously, when the beach, uh, beach village district is full of people. And so, um, yeah, I got all the thing pop up. In, in, so in 2014, 2015, 2016, the plant exceeded the 80% the threshold of its design flow for three consecutive months. You can see that in the kind of orange line, the blue line, and the green line where you... Uh, so DES, and actually I have some slides that speak to this. Uh, I think they were in the previous select board presentation. But uh, a couple of years ago, DES updated, the, the Department of Environmental Services updated their uh, regulations. It used to be when you were at 80% of your design flow, DES had increased ability to meddle in your affairs in terms of growth and moratoriums and things like that. They, uh, they realized that a lot of plants didn't have a flow problem. They had a load problem, so they amended the rules to say flow or load. So now we're in the in the conundrum of we, we are uh, at or above that threshold. And uh, so the DES has the ability to play a larger role in growth within the town. And I, you probably recollect from a handful of years ago when there were some issues at the plant, and I think the town actually had a sewer moratorium for a while till the dewatering upgrade solved some of those challenges. Uh, catch up here. So these slides, uh, it's a little tough to tell, but Right now, these four tanks exist. These two don't. We've drawn them in. There's actually space on site reserve for them. That's what this aeration upgrade would do is build the two additional tanks to give you that additional capacity. Uh, let's see. All those colored lines you're seeing, that's, oh, sorry. that's the spaghetti of all the reflows and flows. Oh, and, yeah. You know, recharges that go around and how everything isn't just that simple. Uh, you make yeah That's exactly right. So plant. yeah, the the plant is uh, underground. It's like pipes running everywhere, to and fro, connecting different tanks. Some moving sludge, some moving sewage, some moving treated effluent, some, some moving, moving recycled plant water that we can put back in. You know, it, it's everything. 
Uh, so primary clarifier upgrade and the thickener upgrade, this is replacing those old mechanisms, uh, doing some concrete repair, adding some railings for safety that don't current, aren't currently there. Uh, Jen spoke to the plant water system. So the, the plant, it, treating wastewater is a water intensive process, both for spray water and wash water, but rather than use money we, uh, water we have to pay for from Aquarian, we, we take the treated effluent and pump it back through and use it for on-site wash down and things like that and for the dewatering process. But those pumps are also in pretty rough shape. Uh, let's see. So some sludge pump, polymer pump. I, I apologize, I should have made these photos bigger. They're kind of tough to see here, but uh, there's just some, uh, some of the equipment on site. So we spoke briefly about some of the operations upgrade uh, this would be, right now there's some chemical storage that's also in that space, so we have, uh, there's some other atmospheric challenges that we want to solve with some ventilation by segregating off some of those chemical spaces. And lastly, as yes, uh, Jen spoke to, providing some additional office space or rearranging, rearranging space within, is, that, yeah. Yeah, within that space to get people out of that electric room. And also we want to move the SCADA equipment into that electric room. Right now the SCADA system is in a trailer outside. <laughs> Not a great place for IT infrastructure, but it's uh, been a necessity that we had done it that way. So again, maintenance garage, which is this uh, building across from the building where the lab is, if you're familiar with the plant. Uh, there's, again, that's a, a space that doesn't meet current codes by any stretch. There's a commingling of different use spaces. There's sludge pumping, there's garage space, there's some, some office use in there. So if you wanna get that upgraded. Uh, here's a little more on the SCADA system. And actually there's a photo of the trailer there that, uh, that yeah, that's where all the computers that house the plant are currently housed. Uh, so that's kind of what we had to talk about today. I just jumped back to the aerial in case we had any questions on it. Uh, any questions for us on what we've gone through? I, I think you mentioned twice the word growth. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what how you reach your projections on growth. I know Mark and I were on a, you know, a, a committee a number of years ago that looked at kind of build out for the town. Um, boy, that had to be 10, 12 years ago, I think. Jen's under uh, Yeah, um, Jen Kimball, when, when she came here. Anyhow, just walk me through yeah. uh, so there's what, the, how you talk about growth and what that means. There's a section of the facility plan that has a, a bunch of detail on this. I, it will be good to get your input on, too. But basically, we met with the planning department, looked at your own, your own master planning growth projections, and kind of wove, okay, if the population grows by this much, here's the associated sewage flows. So we didn't do any growth projections our own, on our own. We basically looked at other growth projections that have been done on behalf of the town by others, and calculated the associated sewer flows with that. And that's what drove our growth projections largely. And one of the things we did do, because it was very clear from previous studies in what was assumed from a density standpoint, so if you think of areas down at the beach that have the one, two, three bungalows on a lot, they come before this board, they become retail on the bottom, four stories up, all one, two bedroom units and going, well, that's additional flow. So if you look at the density you're getting per lot down there, what used to be projected, it just wasn't what was getting, what was happening. So we went through the zoning map and we went through and we took some of the approved projects and what was getting approved in these areas and used that density to build out lots to try to make it uh, apples to apples comparison based on the numbers that we had versus actually what was happening. So there is yeah. that uh, built into, you know, meeting with Jason, going through, picking the projects out. I know I met with Kristen. We went through all the different zones, you know, west side of town, what would happen if um, the Liberty Lane area, we, we used all those numbers in, in how things were generated to come up with future growth. So, so the plants at some level today and the build out will be at some higher level and, you know, what are those? Two levels, or, you know. And yes. So, uh, so the red line there is your eighty percent threshold, yeah. and I should have put it. I had another version of this that has the the treatment capacity threshold, which is right around seventy six hundred pounds per day. So, like right in there. 
So there are months when you've exceeded it, but because the guys who run the plant do a heck of a job, and you know, you, there's some safety factor built in, they haven't. They have an exemplary compliance record in terms of treating it to the FMO standards. But yeah, you're you're basically bumping into that threshold. So but this new aeration what would, what will would get be us the new up. Oh, Good question. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I don't know if I'm going to have that number at my fingertips, and I don't want to say the wrong number. So let me get back but to you. That's something on that. that we're going to take down yeah. and. We really I sort of want to just segue for a second before a few more questions of how we plan to move from here. Um, yeah. We are currently working on a segment of uh, 10 different videos uh, for all these different components. Pictures are hard to see. Um, also, looking at a pump doesn't really, I mean, it takes some narration. It tries to, you know, it's yeah, not it's looking at, hey, you know, <laughs> here's, you know, pretty pictures. The, the stuff we're dealing with is not pretty. Let's. But we're trying to put it for everybody to understand. There are going to be technical people that vote in this down, and there are people that are not technical, but they want to understand what is this all about. So we plan to do a whole bunch of uh, videos with some narration explaining what's wrong in these pictures and what the uh, expected outcome will be. Um, the capability stuff that we're talking about, that's the other part. There were, we hope to get some numbers and we're looking for those type of questions so people have it and they want to know it. We also plan to do a uh, question and answer session. This will happen before deliberative session, probably middle of January, so people can come in, ask questions. If we don't have the answers that night, be able to send you back in, with our information and we'll get you the answers because we do want people to support that this is a need uh, for the town. We plan on using the social media um, everything from the multiple Facebook pages in town between the town's one, the people in the know. There, there's many out there um, to help share these videos, uh, to share any of the messages, share the questions that we have going. All the facility study is already on the town's website. It's already on the DPW page. This video will be linked to our page. It is on uh, the town website page. So our goal moving forward is to really try to educate everybody on what the wastewater treatment plant process is, what are our issues to date, what are our capability concerns, what is deteriorating, what is a safety issue, what is about ventilation, explain that, and then how we plan to fix it and what you'll have at the end. So everybody truly understands where their money will be going. Um, so th there is a whole rollout here that we hope to have um, all everybody in the know by uh, deliberative session. Sure. Yeah, but I was going to go down a different direction, so. That's fine. My question is, I know the state has been fairly slow in paying for commitments for these kind of upgrades. Is there still a fund, so to speak, at the state for any kind of assistance? So we are pre-approved on the SRF priority um, for this money. Uh, for these improvements. Uh, there's SRF funding, correct me, is 20%? Uh, no. no. So the State Revolving Loan Fund, or SRF, is basically a low-interest loan program. Right, right. In the old days, there was that, and there was state aid grant yes. funding, right, and right, right. there was other. Which those they didn't pay for 10 years. Yeah, and they're <laughs> probably not going to. Yeah. So the, those pro the, the big grant programs, I mean, this plant in 74 is built with mostly federal money. Hmm. So we don't have that luxury anymore. Uh, the potential does exist, depending on where we rank on DES's scale, which I think we'll do pretty well, to get some principal forgiveness money. Which, which is what I was which, talking which, about. Where you yeah. were going with. And that can be as much as 12.5%, but it's like a sliding scale and not many people get the full. So we will, yeah, we're positioned to, to maximize our ability to get, well, principal forgiveness money. They don't like calling it grant money, right. but it's essentially the same thing. But there's no guarantees with it. And uh, we, we can get the SRF money, which is a lower interest sometimes in the bond bank loan for the work from the state. And we're, we're, we've done all the work to the stay on that list. application process. So far. But, but yeah, it won't, it won't be like the, you know, when they built it before and it was... Yeah. And then the phase two, which it looks like is kind of a, a little bit of a duplicate of parts of phase one. Yeah. Is it better to do them all at the same time? <laughs> we had this discussion. We struggled with this for, for many hours trying to figure out, okay, we need a lot of work at the plant. What's the best way to kind of triage it to lessen the impact of the taxpayers 
And we thought, well, we could probably stretch it out a little bit this way. I mean, certainly there's always economies of scale of doing a larger project. There's also a greater likelihood that, that it, it doesn't pass, and then we're stuck with even older equipment two years ago, two years from now, trying again. For, yeah, so it was kind of a, that was our strategy on that. Yeah, and the way that we wrote the article with the town manager and, and all the people <clears throat> that have provided input into it is that these are the components that need to be addressed. When we go out and do the engineering and the design, if it makes the best sense for the town and its money, and it can come in budget, you know, with the, the numbers of this overall, that's what we need to do. We don't want to be doing things twice. There's always going to be the life safety stuff that we have to take care of. We just we need to take care of it. Mm -hmm. It's been too long. It's it's not right. Um, but when you're looking at some of these. Do, uh, dollar values, and I'm pointing to a chart that you know we'll have up on the website, which is actually breaking down the costs of the 13-8 for each of the component of the projects. They're planning level costs. They are not bids. We've we've been through the process before. Sometimes you got to bid and it's more, but we've also been through the process quite a bit. Even recently, you get a planning level cost and things come in under. So that will give flexibility. There's always that opportunity to say well, could there be a bid alternate to do both? What is our actual savings? If we're going to have all the guys in already, mm. let's do it. But we also have to be very careful. The plant has to stay running yep. all at once. So we can't sort of just take it all down. So in a way, you still are doing it Based. separate. You know, So it's a lot of things to think about. It's a lot of things we have thought about. Um, that That is this plan. This whole plan is sort of... For lack of better words, uh, someone had mentioned it last night at the budget committee meeting. You know, I'd really like to see a strategic plan, and I get that because it's visual. You know, if you could see it on the board, this is the written part of that strategic plan. It, it's in here. You know, how do you get from point A to point B? Um, it just doesn't have the design level details um, because we need to get it funded to be able to get there. The last question is: Keep going. If, uh, Keep going. Please do. The, the, my experience as a state rep is people ask me a question <clears throat> and I throw up on them. I give them all the information, just like you're going to give us all the information here, yeah. to a level I don't care about. I, I mean, I don't understand it. I'm, I, you tried to give me some more. Great, you know, thank you. I, I, don't, I don't care. You're the experts. I believe you. Yeah. And so my qu my point is, uh, hopefully, uh, in this presentation, you're going to have some higher level stuff. It basically says, if we don't do this, you can't flush your toilet. All right, that's the, that's the, the the end of the line. Mm -hmm. So, I can understand that, you know. But when you get me into flow and capa capability and all that, man, you just threw up all over me, and I don't even know what you said. So I, I'm just making a, su a suggestion. When you're talking with citizens who ask you an honest question, you blah, blah, blah. They, they, they didn't want that much. Yeah. They just want to know, if I put the key in the car, will it run? Work. Uh, don't explain in, internal combustion engines to me. But some people want to know how the internal combustion engine works, and I, I, I respect <coughs> that. Yeah. But and, I'm saying, and as do we. And don't forget fine. us dummies who just want to know <laughs> that if I don't vote for this, I can't flush my toilet. Well, and anybody who's ever had a sewage backup or hasn't been able to flush their toilets knows that that's a problem. Well, and but that's where we're headed. That's and what that's, I'm saying. If, <laughs> if we can't treat our water, it's a non-flushing, it's a use restriction, it's fines, it's, you know. Well, it's, I guess but the, you don't want to make it this scare tactic, but that's reality. That's the facts. I mean, it, it, it's a factual there thing. Is, there is our an treatment of, plant treats yeah. everything that you flush. Right. And I guess to build on your car analogy, because I liked it, uh, there's certain things we have to do to get the car past inspection right, right now. Right. And then we also have to come to terms with the fact that the car's got 300,000 miles on it. Right. And so we have to solve both those problems. We try to kind of triage how we do so. <laughs> Use the metaphor. I mean, yeah. it, it, it may be more understandable. But I'm just, that well. works. Uh, just quick, what, can, in the spirit of getting people to get behind this, what brought this all to a head right now? Did the, did this come? Did this become clearer to us because the state was inspecting it? Is that so? 
it was the 80% threshold when they changed the rules to be 80% of organic load, which you are and have been for some time. So when they made that rule change, all of a sudden you were over the threshold at which DES says, wait a second, you, have, you can't, you got to run sewer permits by us before you approve them. That and other stuff. And that's all presented to ENVWS 700 regs on their so website. It, it is. It's a regulation change that really brought this aeration, you know, component, which is almost half of the 13.8 that we're asking for. That brought, brought the capacity, capacity and growth challenge. Challenge. Yeah. The, uh, to the front. Yeah, the other equipment uh, re uh, upgrade and replacement stuff came to light as we dug into the equipment systems at the at the facility and looked at the run times and ages and current condition. I just didn't want people to think that this is some random, you know, That's good point. Good idea for today. No, yeah, rumor mills this develop week's, here quickly. This isn't this week's and, challenge. Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> or that, you know, someone's going to start, you know, building some major convention center at the beach and we have to be ready for all this kind of nonsense. So, but this is... This is real. It affects all of us, and and it's it's just time. Right? And Mark, to your point, and I, I was touching on it earlier because I was hoping someone would ask. When we do these facility plans every six years, the one from ninety something, the one from two thousand six, yeah. any of these items were mentioned. So that's what I'm saying that they weren't coming out of nowhere. Sure. They were projecting that you're going to have issues. So when we started hitting those capacity and capability concerns and the regs change on you, you look at all those things and you go, okay, the red flag is here. You know, we, ha we have to do something. If you constantly ignore your infrastructure, it is all going to fall apart on you on the worst time ever. Right. That's Murphy's Law. I didn't make that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back into the weeds a little bit. <laughs> And Tracy's going to leave, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what you're talking about is the upgrades to the plant. But I, I, I looked at the report, and, and, you know, you raised some issues with I&I, &I, uh, inflow and infiltration. Mm -hmm. And that's not what you're talking about here. But I, I think it's an important aspect, and I guess it's maybe more to you, Jen, or, as to what, what Public Works is doing on that side of it. You know, you're getting a lot of stuff in the plant that doesn't belong there. 100 percent and that is part of this uh and when i say this i'm not talking the 13880 i'm talking about our facility and what we have to overcome and treat so part of that load it was asked earlier you know where does it come from if you think about it it comes from residences it comes from new projects that we're developing it comes from the expanded beach from comes from our visitors or guests during the summer it comes from what i want to call normal growth when you talk about where else does it come from, yep, it comes from infiltration. We have ocean water getting into our sewer systems. Uh, we have older piping that hasn't had the funding to be replaced, uh, the old clay pipe. Again, if it lets groundwater in, it all eventually makes a plant, and we're treating water that isn't what you're flushing. It's a waste of system and money. So what are we doing? We have part of our budget next year allocated to... Um, what we call lining, some of the, I call them the trans marsh, the sewer lines that go through the marsh area, making sure that those manholes and piping systems, uh, those being the collectors, are not uh, letting in the water, especially being in the marsh where the water is up and down constantly. Uh, we require all development to have locked lids or Pamrex covers. Um, we hear complaints, people don't like them, it's more expensive. Well, we do it so the water can't get in. Um, so if the water comes up on a street, it can't come back into the manhole uh, to get into our system. Uh, we replaced 15 of those in October. I think it was 15 of them out on Island Path. So we locked that system uh, so water couldn't get in when water was hitting on those roads. So yes, removing I&I &I mm -hmm. is an integral component of balancing our capacity both in flow and load uh, that comes to the plant. I have, yeah, I have some other questions. Um, we have a couple of big projects in the pipeline now, the hotel mm -hmm. and the Alzheimer's unit, and how do they fit into all of this is, is um, are 
when they get ready to go online, are they going to be stopped? Absolutely not. not ready. That, I've been part of all the projects that you have in the pipeline. I've been fortunate enough that I've seen quite a few in just the last two years alone. Um, no, that is all part of our PRC process. That's part of the coordination we do with Right Peers. <coughs> part of the projections. Yes, they will add flow. But when we look at the total flow, so the million gallons a day, and the total loads, we are looking at that. Okay. Yep, we Hampton West, Liberty Lane, that's included. In that the all of it, even there, made up. Like we assumed, well, what if they do this here or do that there? Um, because we needed to project. Uh, so these new things incorporate being able to handle that and growth. Okay. Um, in your recommendations, page one four, um, it said consider revisiting the sewer use ordinance. Is that something we should be doing at, at the planning board? So that is probably more ultimately a, a select board item, but what that is is the, okay. the, the, uh, the rules that govern people connecting to the sewer system. Right now, yeah, that, that is another, another way to help uh, cause the industrial users to pay more commensurate with what their load contribution is. That The mechanism by which that's done is usually sewer use ordinance. There's many things that probably and can with everybody's cooperation and participation go on concurrently. If everybody in town can understand and vote yes and for the importance of this upgrade, concurrently looking for ways to generate financial sustainability for those higher users can be put together as well. Um, if that's the route that the, the town decides to take. Um, but that, I, I don't want to, I'm going to use the word income, but I don't mean it as like uh, income, because it's not income. That money generated or collected isn't going to pay for what we need. No. It can support and support future phases and improvements, but it's not going to solve what we need now. Well, I guess it was part of a, a bigger thought that what can we as a planning board be doing to maybe prevent this bigger problem in the future? Well, it's hard to say that it's prevention. You know, you do preventative maintenance. Some of these things that we're asking for is We've been doing the preventative maintenance. We've been taking care of our pumps and our pipes and our processes and things like that. It's just the car's got 300,000 miles on it. It's time for us to, to move to perhaps more efficient processes and pumps and, and look at big pictures. And, and I think your question also spoke to what, what's the planning board's role in that. And I think the big part there is to be aware that there's – current ongoing growth, there's projected future growth, and there's growth we don't even know about yet that will at some point occur in Hampton. When that growth is within the sewered area, it has an, the treatment plant has a finite ability to treat sewage. And so every growth and, and decision we make has an impact on that reserve capacity. So I guess that's where the planning board comes in, is being aware of those limitations and that at some point the plant will run out of capacity unless we take steps like we're proposing here to increase its capacity to treat sewage. So I guess that's where the planning board fits into the puzzle is the growth piece of it. And as Jen just mentioned, uh, the PRC process mm -hmm. is, is the entree to that. And, uh, and you know, she or, or Chris or, or Chris, yeah, somebody. Yeah, Chris and I and Tim, we've, yep. uh, we've looked and <clears throat> calced and done things. And, you know, it's why, and I'm sure, what do they call it, um, the intent of the use regulation or the zoning that was written was for a purpose. You set a density for development for a reason. And when you are tripling density or quadrupling density, well, when you do these studies, you're not assuming that it was quadrupled. You assumed it was going to be what the zoning said. I mean, so, so it goes both ways. It's zoning, it's planning, it's looking at it and making sure you're just not thinking in the moment, but, well, if everybody could, if we changed all the density regs in town to say that everybody could have five stories everywhere, that's not what we're planned out for. I, I guess that's the excessive of what I'm trying to say. You know, that, that's the planning component. 
Yeah, the, the selectmen are the uh, the sewer authority, if you will. I mean, mm -hmm. some of the things you're talking about are really the selectmen's uh, purview, uh, and not ours. But it did, like the accessory drilling units, you know, that made every residential a house potentially a duplex. Yeah. You know, and we have no really no control over that right. beyond what we've done. So. But what the town has done is just, and I see it as a positive. They uh, enacted the ordinance and they passed the ordinance for our sewer um, assessment fee. So when you are adding a bedroom, which adds flow to our system, you're contributing uh, to funds that help allow us to make some of the improvements we have been able to do this year. You know, that's that funding it to help. If we're going to take it in and we have to increase how much we can do, how are we going to pay for it? Well, the height, when we raised the height at the beach, that increased density. Yep. Um, not really. I just was you know thank them for coming in, both uh, Tim and uh, Jen for coming in. I think it's a very important topic. I think it was important that they did come before the board and, and uh, talk about this. It was a good discussion. Um, one thing that was brought up was about tours of, of the facility. I think that maybe it would be a good thing for those board members who wanted to to maybe if that could be coordinated. I certainly would. Yep. And it doesn't. Everybody doesn't have to come together. We realize everybody has different schedules and. I mean, we're there during the day all the time. So if it's ever during the day, Monday through Friday, yep. that's just a simple phone call. Mike and Mike will be happy to um, just make sure we're you know not under. Not removing a pump that day to fix it, you know, that type of thing. Um, I, you know, uh, next week, just with the holidays, we might be a little short on staff. Doesn't mean we can't do it, but if you have time, feel free. Uh, but yes, anytime. And then we have staff there on the weekends as well. The plant runs 24-7, 365 days a year. Our plant is staffed seven days a week. So we understand that Monday through Friday is when most of us are at work. So if it needs to be Saturday for... You guys are residents, so we'll set that up too. Yep, we're we're here to help educate people to tours. know what the issue is. To the extent they want to know. To, to the extent, extent they that they want to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank, thank you very, very much, much for having me. All right, thank you guys. Much.